I'm going to read about 20 verses, so be patient. But I want you to look for a theme in these verses. There is, there is a phrase that is repeated. That's a concept that is so central to the Christian doctrine that will be repeated in these verses. Listen to it, and if you figure out what it is, it's not too difficult, don't yell it out, wait until I read the whole thing, and then you could tell me what you think it is. Ready? All right, you guys are paying attention, right? We are looking for a two-word theme that is in the Christian doctrine, and that is one of the foundations. All things came into being through him, and apart from him, nothing came into being that has come into being. He came as a witness to testify about the light, so that all might believe through him. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. For God did not send the Son into the world to judge the world, but that he would the world might be saved through him. Men of Israel, listen to these words. Jesus the Nazarene, a man attest to you by God with miracles and wonders and signs which God performed through him in your midst, just as you yourself know. And on the basis of the faith in his name, it is the name of Jesus that has strengthened this man whom you see and know. The faith which comes through him has given him this perfect health in the presence of you all. And he supposed that his brethren understood that God was granting them deliverance through him, but they did not understand. Therefore, let it be known to you, brethren, that through him forgiveness of sins is proclaimed to you. And through him everyone who believes is freed from all things from which you could not be free through the law of Moses. Much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath of God through him. In all these things, we are overwhelmingly conquerors through him who loves us. For him and through him and to him are all things. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Yet for all of us, there is one God, the Father from, from whom all things come and exist. And the one Lord Jesus, by whom all things, and we exist through him. For as many as are the promises of God in him, they are yes, therefore also through him is our amen to the glory of God through us. For through him we both have our access in one spirit to the Father. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. For by him all things were created, both in the heavens and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. And through him all to reconcile all things to himself, so we make peace through the blood of his cross. Through him I say, whether things on earth or things on heaven. When he had disarmed the rulers' authorities, he made a public display of them, having triumphed over them through him. Whenever, whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks through him to God the Father. Therefore he is able to also to save forever those who draw near to God through him, since he always lives to make intercessions for them. Through him, let us continually offer sacrifice of praise to God, that is, the fruit of lips that give thanks in his name. And by this, love of God was manifested in us, that God has sent his only begotten Son into the world, so that we might live through him. And today's verse, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 21, who through him are believers in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, 
so that your faith and hope are in God. All right. What is the two word? Anything else? You got it. Five points each. Extra credit. Five out of five. It's a hundred. <laughs> it's a hundred percent. Through him is the central doctrine of the New Testament. Through him, everything was made. Through today's verse, through him are believers in God. Emphasizes that Christians are what they are because of Jesus. And not only that, this verse says, through him, you are believers in God. Can you say that about yourself? I believe in God because of Jesus. Do you believe in God? Yes. Why? Yes. It is a deeper subject. It's not gonna, it, it, you're not gonna have the answer right away, but it's something to ponder. Why do you believe God? We are told it's through him, because of him. If it wasn't for our relationship with him, we would not have known the true God. Hey, I'm gonna give you a few verses here. John 14, six. Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Now, this is Jesus saying that you cannot go to God, you cannot know God unless you know me. You can't say that you believe in God unless you believe in me. I'm going to read three more verses, then we'll come back to this point. Salvation is found in no other, no, salvation is found in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. You know what this is saying? It's saying no other isms or religions or movements that has been made or is being made or will be made can take you to God other than Jesus. There is no other name. There is no other name out there other than Jesus that can take you to God. You know, it's very popular to think, to say that, you know, and Buddhists believe this a lot. So, you know, it's the same God. I, I watched a documentary about Buddhism in India the other day. And uh, they're... Uh, reincarnation, that never-ending cycle of coming back, coming back, coming back, with the hope, their hope is to get to a God state. That I didn't know, I just learned for the first time. Their goal is to get to God. They will come back, hopefully live a better life and come back as a better thing or a person. Hopefully they get better, 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 to the point that one day, they can break out of that cycle of reincarnation and go to God's state. Well, there is no other name and there is no other way to get to God. There, there are so many isms out there. Like Muhammad is not going to get you to God. Jesus will. Church is not going to get you to God. Jesus will. Movement is not going to get you to God. Jesus will. The fact that you're a nice person is not going to get you to God. Jesus will. Not all roads lead to God. Not all roads lead to God. There is only one road. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father. The one who confesses the Son has the Father also. Very clearly, again and again, we are told, unless you know Jesus, unless you believe in him, you don't know God. We know God because we know Christ. The question becomes, do we know Christ? 
What does it mean to know him? We say, I believe in Jesus. I believe in God. What does that mean? What does it mean to believe? Are you a believer? Are you a believer? Never mind. That's, 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 that's a sad commentary on human existence. Matthew 11, verse 27, Jesus says, All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father. Nor does anyone know the Father except the Son. And anyone to whom the Son wills to reveal him. If you know God, if you know Jesus, it's because Jesus revealed him to you. We can't take credit for that either. The faith that we have is not our own accomplishment. He chose us. He revealed it to us. And we just accept it. So we get no credit in this thing. It's all him. He's calling out. There, there are others that he's calling out. There is, there is some in here right now. God is calling. He has chosen you. He's calling you. But it's up to you to answer. What does it mean to believe? Believers. To believe, the de definition, the biblical definition is, um, or uh, dictionary definition is, to induce one by words to believe, to have confidence. Refers to those who have placed their trust without reservation in Christ, their hope. But this actually comes from a word picture. This was very interesting. It has the idea of leaning. Leaning one's entire weight upon one who is trustworthy. A picture which is inherent in the Hebrew word, amen. The word amen comes from the Greek, uh, not Greek, um, the Hebrew word, amen, which has the idea of leaning. Now I'm going to explain to you. It's going to make sense. In Genesis chapter 15, verse 6, Moses says that Abraham believed in the Lord and he reckoned it to him as righteousness. This is also repeated in Hebrews, right? Abraham believed God and he was considered righteous. The word actually has the understanding of leaning. Abraham leaned on God and then he was considered righteous. What does that mean, to lean? It means to trust him. Pretend like you're, you're wounded, right? And there is a soldier friend of yours. He comes, and he takes all your weight off of you, and you lean on him, and he carries you. That's what it means to believe. That means to put all your trust, your weight, everything within your being on someone else. That's what it means to believe. That's the picture. Believe is the Hebrew word for, like we said, man, which has the root meaning of leaning on the promises of one who is eternally immutably trustworthy. You see, if I'm a believer, if I say I believe in Jesus, I'm saying that I trust with every single aspect of my life. I am leaning on him. He is the one that's carrying me. No wonder Jesus said, take my yoke upon you. My yoke is easy. Lean on him is the understanding of believing. So if I say I'm, I'm a believer, I am leaning, I am trusting with everything I have in Jesus. If I believe in Jesus, that means he is the one I have leaned on and he's the one who's carrying me. Is that the case in your life today? Later on, when we come to um, the end chapters of 
First Peter, we are going to be told to cast our cares on him because he cares for you. Now, to be a believer is to be someone who trusts Jesus with everything. With your life, with your future, with your body, with your decisions, the way you bring up your children, the way you get married, who you marry, what kind of business you do, what kind of language you use, what kind of people you hang out with, what kind of church you go to, what kind of service you do, what kind of friends you have, what kind of um, clothes you wear. Is he influencing you in all this? Are you leaning? Is he carrying you? Or are you walking on your own path, in your own understanding, and just thinking that you believe him? If you're a believer, he is carrying you. That means he's taking you where he wants you to go. Are you doing that? Are you a believer? If you believe God, you're saying that I believe God because Jesus showed him to me. Are you a believer? Is he carrying your weight or are you trying to carry it on your own? This is the question we must answer. This is the question we must come to. Every single one has to answer this question. We're all going to stand before. And you can't start walking with him. He cannot start carrying you. He cannot take you out of your environments where he, he doesn't want you to be until and unless you come to that point and say, Lord, I did it my way all my life and I know this is not the best life you have for me. I am ready and willing to do whatever you want me to do. Forgive me for you were not in my life, you did not make a difference. I've sinned against you in my life. Forgive me. But from now on, I will walk with you and go where you want me to go. In that instant, you become a believer. Only then you become a Christian. And in that second, your eternity begins. And angels rejoice. We are told in the Bible. There is some of you here today. They haven't taken that step. And there is a very real force out there that is keeping you to take that step. But I can encourage you. I pray. I implore you. Please take that step. So that, as the Bible puts it, so that the times of refreshing might begin. Trust God. Lean on him. He will do amazing things for you. God bless you.